I also want to talk about your podcast that you put on our radar. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 What made you want, when did you start your podcast? Well, I didn't start this podcast actually. So interestingly enough, so this goes back to when I was on tour and I was just, I had a lot of downtime, especially sitting on a tour bus and stuff. You, you just kind of like, you start thinking like, well, how can I make more money? I'm just sitting here. So I got interested in the <laughs> stock market, you know, this is like hard to tie back to kombucha to see sure, you know, yeah. this route. We're taking a left. <laughs> yeah, we're taking a left. <laughs> That's turn. okay. Yeah. But interestingly, I started learning about the, the stock market and, uh, it was something I had no idea about. And I don't really come from a family that's very, you know, that's just not how they think. And so I started going down the rabbit hole on that. And through sheer happenstance, through a family friend, I had this opportunity to have dinner with Warren Buffett. And uh, really like a, random. Like a one-on-one really dinner? Ser- or yeah, it was like, like a group like of folks. Small, yeah. I got like one or two questions in, you know. Yeah. But it was a totally serendipitous moment. And so... He likes to say that he's a better businessman because he's an investor and a better investor because he's a businessman. So I saw it as sort of like this positive feedback loop about the more I started learning about investing, I would start, I would really recognize uh, in my own company, what was making it better or, or not. And so as a, as the founder and leader of the company, it was almost like just my educational side of the business to, to keep tying what I'm learning back into the business. So through that, I found a website at the time called Buffett's Books, because I was really big on Buffett at the time. Uh, still am. But these two guys who started this website, it just had a free course on it. And I did the course. And then the day I finished the course, they launched a podcast. And um, I was like, oh, this is interesting. I'll check it out. And this is like five or six years ago. And I started just listening to the show on my commute once a week when it came out. And so you know, over time I started doing things like going to Omaha to the Warren Buffett, you know, Berkshire Hathaway meeting every year. That's like the Woodstock of business. And I started meeting the guys on the podcast and and going to their events and getting to know them. So it's just a show I've listened to for five or six years. And it's since then become the number one investing show in the world. And they have billionaires on the show like Howard Marks and Bill Miller and all these really amazing people on it. And so about six months ago, actually about eight months ago now, Preston, the founder of the show, he has gone really all in on Bitcoin. So he wanted to release a fully Bitcoin focused show. And so that opened up a slot on the main show. And they asked me to, if I'd consider hosting it. And I was just like, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of a dream uh, of mine that I kind of didn't really think about too much, but like, cause I didn't really think that was an option, but it's already afforded me all these amazing opportunities. I've interviewed, you know, Chamath Palhapatia and Jeremy Grantham and, you know, even like Bing Gordon, who's, you know, the founder of EA Sports and on the board of Amazon. And, and I'm just getting, like this week I interviewed Jim Collins. So if you're oh, nice. familiar with like sure. Good to Great, Built yeah. to Last. So wrapped with Jim Collins for like two and a half hours. I mean, it was like, it's just presenting these amazing opportunities that again, I'm taking and putting back into my own business and it's forcing me, it's like a forcing mechanism to continue to learn. And it's just been a really great thing that I do on the weekend. So how did you get on their radar? Like you said, you were a fan of the show. You listened to the podcast. How did you even get on their radar to be on the short list for potential hosts? Yeah. Well, funny enough, um, I had met them at a couple of events and connected. They actually invested in better booch at one okay. point in one of our rounds. So they were, you know, very familiar with who I am, Gotcha. but I literally had to apply like anybody else. And so I emailed them and remember, I mean, I remember talking to my wife and she was, I was, cause look, I'm a college dropout. I, I'm not like, I don't have like an MBA. I didn't work at Goldman Sachs. I'm not like an investing guru in like a traditional way. But what I did bring to the table in my mind was a very deep understanding of how Warren Buffett invests. Cause I've studied it for a long time. And I did come from the entertainment world. So I do have some, you know, familiarity with yeah. talking and you can have the conversation, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. being f- familiar with people. And so I thought I was kind of uniquely qualified. And so I threw my hat in the ring and, uh, you know, I did everything from having to submit like an intrinsic value assessment of a stock and things like that. And, uh, yeah, it just kind of went from there. So I, I, apparently I built, I built, a beat out a professor from Harvard. Uh, they told me so at some point. Nice. So, you, you know, were probably think, more interesting. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, th- I think, I, you know, if I had to, and you have practical knowledge, I think that's something that gets, I think lost. that's all it is. Yeah. I think it's, that was the appeal was like, our listeners are not very academic either. Right. Like they're, they're usually people who have made some good money, but 
they don't like they're look trying to learn like I am. You're one of them. You're I'm kind of one of them. Yeah. yeah. So I think that was just the appeal was, you know, that's a Trey's smart dumb call enough on their to, part. Uh, <laughs> I mean, frankly, <laughs> yeah. no, to be honest, I mean, that's that's a tough decision that I think the optics could be. Oh, really? But yeah, in some way they were looking at the bigger picture. 